Kumaraho has been traditionally used as rongo rako or plant medicine by Māori. In the past it would have been essential that it was identified correctly in order to avoid accidental poisoning and the same applies to us today. The good news is that with the correct observations we can identify it. In this video we're specifically going to be talking about two ways people have used to identify kumaraho and hopefully make it easier for you to recognise. Be sure to stick around to the end because there are some lookalikes that you'll want to know about. Before we go any further, just know that we are not doctors and this video is for information purposes only. With the legalities out of the way, let's talk about the first way used to identify kumaraho, which is by the flowers. Kumaraho originates in New Zealand and is in the buckthorn family. In botanical language, it's known as Pomaderis kumeraho, the last part there being Latinized interpretation of the Māori name. Like many members of the buckthorn family, it has tiny flowers and a somewhat flat top cluster. In the case of Kumaraho, the abundant clusters are a sunny, buttery yellow and quite unique looking among New Zealand plants. The flowers contain plant chemicals called sapiens, which come from the Latin word meaning soap. If you rub your hands together in the water, you will see this activity. The flowers were used by early gum diggers to get gum off their hands, so sometimes the plant is called gum digger's soap. The flower buds appear in early autumn and wait months before opening in spring. They flower around the same time as the yellow kofi and at the same time when the kumara is generally planted. The flowers fade and the seeds appear, looking very similar to what the emerging buds did back in autumn. The seeds are then distributed onto the surrounding soil. Eventually the flower remains a shed and are not visible. The long duration from bud through to seed means that the flowers are a reliable means of identifying the plant. But when the flowers are missing we need another strategy, which brings us to the second way to identify kumaraho, and that's by the leaves. Kumaraho is a scruffy shrub, it grows to around 3 or 4, maybe 5 metres high. It likes to grow in the warmer parts of the country and is naturally occurring only in the North Island. It likes a sunny location and it prefers cleared land with poor soil conditions like track edges, fire breaks and roadside banks. It can be found with plants that also like those environments, for example gorse, pampas, privet, katoniesta, evergreen buckthorn, manuka, kanuka and aki aki. Like most New Zealand natives, kumaraho is evergreen. It holds its leaves all the year. The leaf form is simple and around the same size as your finger. As the plant approaches flowering, the leaves become more variable in size and shape, becoming longer and slightly more pointed. The tip of the leaf is not super sharp, but more dulled or blunted. The top side has a dark green matte finish paint job and the underside contrasts in a lighter carpeting of green grey. The edges of the leaf have no obvious serrations or waves. The leaves are placed alternately rather than mirrored up the stems. Under the leaf the veins are raised and a slight gathering around these gives the upper surface a subtle, very subtle wrinkling effect. The leaves are thick and robust, they do not bruise easily. Knowing what the flowers and leaves look like will help you recognise kumaraho, but there are some plants that grow in the same environment that look very similar. These lookalikes are also in the buckthorn family, so it's not surprising that they share the same features. The two most common are Cotoniasta and Evergreen Buckthorn. There are several of these species in New Zealand, but only two of those have made it to the New Zealand watch list as bush invaders. Evergreen Buckthorn is distinguished from Kumaraho by its serrated leaf edges, semi-gloss finish and dark berries. Cotoniesta is much closer in leaf appearance to Kumaraho and when seen together without those flowering parts the two plants are almost identical. Unlike Kumaraho, Cotoniesta doesn't have flower buds on in autumn and it starts to flower much later toward midsummer, eventually producing orange red berries after Kumaraho has finished flowering. The safest way to initially identify a Kumaraho has to be by the flowers. If you've enjoyed this video then maybe you'd like to see one of our other ones on using kumaraho or another one on plant identification.